What's going on everybody, Teddy Baldassar here. In this video, we're going to be continuing our series looking at building wash collections at different budgets. So last time we did $2,000, the time before that we did $1,000. So it probably makes the most sense to do $3,000. And as you might be familiar, if you've seen those other videos, I have seven different personas that I have created to go through this because in reality, building a wash collection is very subjective. It comes down to the personal individual behind it, what their overall strategy is and thought process is around actually buying watches. So wanted to have seven different types of buyers and what would probably make sense for them if they wanted to go this route. Of course, can't include all watches here. There's endless scenarios that could be mentioned here, but wanted to kind of at least offer some different possibilities here. And I think this was the best way to do that. So first let's go through these personas. Now the first persona here is the check off the boxes individual. This type of collection needs to have a watch for every single scenario, even for those scenarios that never happen. Persona two, this is the one watch collection. So this is the type of person that tries their best to find the one watch that can meet all their needs and finds joy in the simplicity for reaching for the same watch every day. Persona three is the hipster. This type of collector can't stand having anything mainstream. So really prioritizing micro brands is what they look for. Persona four is the diver fanatics. So this type of collector is fascinated only with the world of dive watches. Persona 5 is the perfect duo. This type of collector likes simplicity, but can never settle with just one watch. So they opt to go for the balance of a dress and say sports slash everyday piece. Persona 6 is the formal collector. So this is an individual that either enjoys dressing up in formal attire or is required to based on their occupation and do like simplicity. So they'll look for two different dress watches that can really round out their many outfits. And then Persona 7 is the three watch collection of the perfect trio. This collector likes to have three watches to cover all of their bases one dress, one every day, and then one sports style watch. But all right guys, before we get too far into this video, I wanna give a shout out to a watch that's on my website, teddybaldasar.com with the Marathon GSAR. Now there's a lot of military spec watches out there. There's kind of a lot of pretenders in this space, but this was actually a watch that was issued to US Armed Forces, Canadian Armed Forces, this one here is the Government Search and Rescue 41 millimeters, but there's also a 36 millimeter option available. All these watches are produced in Switzerland. You're getting high regulated Swiss calibers. These things are built tough as nails. And I have full reviews of these on my website as well. So if you go around, shop around, you can see different product reviews that I'll have on different product pages. And in that video, I also have a nice promo so you can get a nice deal with purchasing the watch on the site. But guys, go look around on the site, shop the watches, shop the straps. It's a great way to support the content to allow me to continue what I'm doing here. I'd love to have your business. But guys, now let's take a look at the check off the boxes type of collection. And when I was thinking about what to do here, what I was really aiming for with this first watch was something that was going to be a complication watch, which meant for me, probably a chronograph. And I was looking at one that wasn't gonna take so much away, but also could be a versatile piece. And then I looked at the Tissot chronograph, the 1948 heritage model. This watch to me was a great entry door into the world of Swiss mechanical chronographs. Chronographs tend to be more expensive, but I think you're getting a lot here that will allow this thing to be versatile. You're getting just north of around a thousand dollars if you're buying this thing new. You're getting also some really versatile looks. And as you'll probably see with rounding out the rest of this collection, you'll notice that some of these are gonna skew a little bit more towards the dress side. Some of them are gonna be more casual. I just thought that this fit really well with kind of filling in some gaps where say a day where you wanted to wear this as a casual wear totally could work. And I think with the right strap, this could also be dressed up quite a bit as well. So that's where I think I would start with that first, the chronograph here. Now moving into the casual everyday wear, I also was looking for versatility here. And I probably didn't need to do something this versatile because I think this is one of the most versatile watches out there. And that's the Zin 556. I think for around $1,000, if this is what you have at your disposal for money to spend, the Zen 556 is great. You can also throw Damasco in here as well. You're also getting some up tech in their uh, actual cases. But for me, I really love the 556. You're getting 200 meters of water resistance, screw down crown on this, you're getting highly regulated movements in that black dial. Although you're not getting applied uh, markers here as you would with some other uh, Zen 556 models, I think the black dial is just so much versatility here. And this could definitely be dressed up with the right strap. It of course can be very casual. You can put this on a NATO strap and it will look great as well. So very versatile watch, really like this. Around $1,100 when you're getting it on just the strap, 1300 bucks on the bracelet. I think I might wanna save the money here just so I have a little bit more to play with. Now, because that Zen watch was so rugged with the 200 meters of water resistance sapphire crystal, I don't think you necessarily need to go that crazy on a diver watch, but I'm still gonna do it. Uh, so we're gonna look at the King Turtle 
Recently did a review of these watches. I was a big fan of them. I think I would probably go for the green dial variant here. So if you've not seen my video where I compared a King Turtle to a more expensive LX series, that's a $6,000 Seiko. I've done a video on that. That was a lot of fun. I'll link to it down below. But the King Turtle to me in that video, despite of course falling a little bit short to a $6,000 watch it was competing against, really impressed with it. That waffle style dial here on these watches, spectacular. You're getting a ceramic bezel. You're getting sapphire crystal as well. You are only getting the 4R series of movements here. Not You're not getting the 6R15 or the 6R35, for example, that we're seeing in a lot of new models being released by Seiko as of late. But I think you're making up for it in other areas with that ceramic bezel, with that sapphire crystal. And of course, I think just the overall finishing on the dial here. Really awesome looking watch. And it's pretty wearable despite the larger case size here with that kind of compact lug to lug because it actually worked on my wrist, which I was very surprised about. So I've used up quite a bit of my budget here on those first three watches, but I think we have a lot of things covered with those three. So let's just have some fun with these last two. I think for one, from an affordable point of view, we don't really have a really extra formal watch, but I wanted to go with the Timex Marlin Blackout Edition. With 34 millimeters, I think this is a very under the radar, simple watch. It's fun. You don't have to worry about it. And if you ever did feel like this wasn't gonna be able to be suitable for what you were going for, I think this is just that watch that you can kind of rely on. Maybe you're wearing more formal attire, you want something that's just gonna slide underneath the dress cuff, not have to worry about it, have some fun. The black dial to me, I think is a little bit more formal with what it's getting across. You could also go for the more silver, that original Timex Marlin, that Timex unveiled in 2017. But I'm just more personally in fan of this. But $200, hand on watch, 34 millimeter classic styling from the 1960s. I think this is a real winner. And now to round it out with our final kind of beater watch here for lack of a better term, but this is a pretty cool G-Shock with the GBX 100. Now these are new releases from G-Shock and I think they're really interesting. So $160, you're getting very similar type of case size to the 5600 series, 46 millimeters here. Thickness is not too bad. Lug to lug isn't too bad. You're getting 200 meters of water resistance. You're getting a really nice high definition LCD screen, which you can really tell when looking at this if you've seen some pictures of these. And you're also getting some up specs. So you're getting a step counter, tide graph, moon data, Bluetooth. It can also connect with your smartphone. So it's a lot, lot of cool just specifications here. I think this does start creeping into the realm of getting into more smartwatch territory, but you're also getting a lot of this, the core ideas of what a G-Shock is. So you get those key functions that you would expect. So with that stopwatch, for example, and of course, just the ruggedness coming with that resin, but also this comes with a stainless steel bezel on top that will really help just add, I think, a level of sleekness when paired with that LCD screen to really make this thing pop. Now, the second collection here that we're gonna be looking at is the One Watch collection. And I know there's a lot of people out here, One Watch, that's all I get for a collection. That's not a collection, but I disagree. I think there are people out there where One Watch, and honestly, I wish sometimes I could just settle with One Watch because it would make my life a lot easier, but just go for One Watch and have everything covered. Because you, if you get down to it, you certainly can do it. And for around $3,000, you're right on the cusp of just getting into some other brands and in some higher end models from certain brands. But for me, the perfect watch for around $3,000 would be a Tudor Black Bay 36 on a bracelet. Black or blue dial would both be great. There's just so much simplicity in this. You're getting some really good wearability. I don't think you should get scared by the 36 millimeter case. This is gonna wear very similar to that of the, the Rolex Datejust, for example, maybe even a little bit bigger with that lug to lug dimension. Plus it's gonna lay on the wrist nice in the same kind of way, you're kind of getting that oyster style case. This basically is to me the Explorer at a more affordable price, but I don't think you're necessarily compromising. I think you're getting something a little bit different with the snowflake hand, just clean looks. This is a real winner, especially, honestly, you can make an argument that in a lot of ways, it's better than a lot of the Black Bay, the other Black Bays, the more you know, traditional heritage Black Bay divers that are out there. This one just succeeds in so many ways. It's just a really well done piece. You can also look at Tudor from another point of view. If you wanted something that was more towards the dressier side of things, you can look at the Tudor style. You can get some of these in 38 millimeter case, nice fluted style bezel. It's kind of, you know, of course, you're looking like a date just here. And I think there's a lot of people be like, oh, just get the date just. But hey, you know, if you have $3,000 to spend, you know, this is a thing, a good watch to maybe consider here as well on the bracelet under $3,000, getting the same movement inside, but I think just really nice watches. And I think one that's definitely overlooked as well. You can also go for the 1926. That's definitely gonna save you a lot more money. So I almost didn't wanna mention it, but from an overall design point of view, probably my favorite of the bunch outside of the Black Bay 36. I think both of those are neck and neck in terms of my own personal preference, but Tudor around here for $3,000 is great. You can also look at Longines and they just released an awesome new collection that also should probably be mentioned here. 
with the Longines Spirit. You're getting cost certified movement on those, 64 hour power reserve, and some really clean looks. So those can also be thrown in here. You're also gonna be saving quite a bit of money so you have some more budget left over. Now, next up we have for Persona 3 is the Hipster. Now for the Hipster category, typically it's a little bit more casual. To start it out, I, I have kind of an interesting quasi say dress piece with Anne Ordain. So Anne Ordain is an awesome Scottish based brand. They actually just sent me some pieces as well because I'm working on a really cool over encapsulating micro brand blog and also video. And I definitely want to include them. Looking here, we're looking at their new model one. So these watches come at around $1,400, 38 millimeter case, pretty wearable case, but also has some nice presence to it. And you're also getting a sleet of base movement within, but really where these guys separate themselves is with their work with enamel. They're offering some of the best out there, especially for this price here. They seem to really take pride in their craft. So I think this is a really cool, just middle of the ground in terms of casual wear, but also could be dressed up depending on the model that you go for. They're more minimalist, but I certainly think they fill a nice void in the market with their use of enamel. Next up, we're looking at a diver watch, and that is from Baltic with their Aqua Scaff. Now for around $600 or so, $600, $700 or so. So why I really like this watch, I think Baltic just kills it from a design point of view. You're getting an automatic Miyota 9000 series. So I think there's a lot of just gripes with Miyota and I think they do it to themselves just because they kind of dilute the brand a little bit because of their more entry level options. But 9000 series movements are pretty solid. Water resistance, 200 meters. You're getting a dome sapphire crystal, very wearable case. I think this is the perfect size for mass market appeal, 39 millimeters, great lug to lug of 47 millimeters and not over the top thick at 12 millimeters. This is just a great looking piece. They've been rolling out different styles and options available on the Beads of Rice Brace. It looks even better, but I want to save a little bit of budget here for our last option. And that is from Aster Banks with their Sea Ranger. So I have been a fan of Aster Banks for some time. I have not actually mentioned them on the channel because I've yet to actually handle one of their pieces, but I saw their Sea Ranger with their ghosted bezel and I was like, whoa, that thing looks sweet. And I was able to ask them, hey, can you send me one of the blue watches? I wanna just test it out, see if I like it because I'm working on this blog, like I mentioned. And for around 850 bucks, you're getting a Sleeta based movement, really clean looks. You're getting a 24 hour scale on the inside, not a true GMT here, but you can track another time zone uh, with that rotating bezel along the outside as well. 300 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, pretty solid bracelet on this thing as well. And they're based in the Midwest like myself. I think these are really attractive and I really get to see them mentioned as frequently as other brands out there. So definitely a cool piece to mention here to round out this trio. Okay, so now for our fourth persona here, we have the Diver Fanatic. I had a couple different thoughts on how I could take this, but I really wanted to find maybe that one core watch that would be kind of the backbone of our Diver kind of Fanatic collection and then have a couple more affordable pieces that also would complement and be solid for the money. So to start off, I wanted to look at the Rado Captain Cook. I'm a big fan of Rado overall. I think they're very overlooked. The Captain Cook series, I did a review on a couple different models, both with the 42 millimeter option as well as the 37 millimeter option, which are two very unique sizes for a dive watch but I actually found that the 42 millimeter wore a little bit better in my opinion. I've kind of come to appreciate a little bit larger watches as of late. And I think both from a case size point of view with the lug to lug actually wear pretty well because you're right in that cusp of 48 millimeters, which is a really good sweet spot for me. But I also think this is a nice mass market for a guy that would be interested in this. They usually have a little bit bigger risk. So I think this would probably be the way that go here. The movement is solid 80 hour power reserve. You're also getting a ceramic bezel on these with a ton of different options that you could go for. And then in addition, you also just get that cool trick with the actual anchor logo at the 12 o'clock on all of these. I think this is something that's maybe not known about Rado until you actually see it in the flesh and see that the anchor is actually moves, which is a really cool trick. And I definitely recommend checking out my review of these pieces if you want some more information about these, but I think this would be a great backbone for the rest of this collection. So now that we've taken up a good majority of our budget, then we have to be thoughtful about these next two. So I wanna look at Japan, and then I also wanna look at Switzerland one more time to start off looking at the Orient Kamasu. I have strong feelings about this watch. I think it's probably the best mechanical dive watch under say 250, 300 bucks, wherever it falls. Usually it will range depending on the time of year, but did a whole review on this. I think it's a great watch, different dial colors to choose from. You're getting, of course, the Orient in-house calibers within, Sapphire Crystal, clean looks in my opinion. I like the handset, indice styles, no misaligned chapter rings here because it doesn't have a chapter ring. So I think that's a big plus as well. And it's a very wearable case because you're looking at that lug to lug around 46 millimeters. 
that's a real winner in my mind for vast majority of wrists out there. So don't get scared by that case size. And to round out our list here, it's a watch that I previously owned. It was a little bit too big for me, but I think for the price, you're gonna be hard pressed to find probably in terms of a value standpoint, a better watch available from a Swiss brand, which is the Glycine Combat Sub. So Glycine as of late, I think has unfortunately started putting out some designs that aren't as tasteful as they once were. I think that is the Invicta connection coming into play here. But from the Glycine Combat Sub, we're looking at like maybe like the classic GoldenEye versions or some other more uh, toned down des designs that they had. I think they have a lot to offer here. The Glycine Combat Sub, you're getting a Swiss movement, very capable water resistance on all of these and a very thin watch. I think that was the one thing. And although you're getting a larger lug to lug distance, so you're gonna have to have, I would say six and a half inch wrist or above to really feel at home on these. But from a thinness standpoint, these are thin for a diver watch and getting that overall water resistance to be able to achieve that, I think it's pretty impressive. And for around 500 bucks that you, these are usually going for, I think that's a really good deal. Okay, so now for our next persona, we have the Perfect Duo. And to start us off here, I wanted to look at more of a dress oriented watch, but I also wanted to have something that had a little bit elevated spec here because on the diver end, I'm going really diver. Uh, so I want something that could be a little bit more versatile and wear in more casual scenarios as well. And I wanna look at Ball. So earlier this year, I did a review of the Engineer M Marvelite from Ball Watches. I actually went to Kipton, Ohio, which was actually not so far away from where I am from here in Cleveland. So I drove out there for the day and that was really the epicenter for what really created ball watches and trying to raise the specification for timekeeping devices on trains after a deadly crash that happened in the 1800s. So if you've not seen that video, it's probably one of my favorite videos I've ever done on the channel, so I'll link to it down below. But today we're gonna to be looking at a more affordable watch and what I think would be a good recommendation is the Fireman Enterprise. For just over $1,100, I think this is a really intriguing option. So you're getting case size 40 millimeters, so really wearable, pretty good lug to lug 48 millimeters. You're of course getting a nice Swiss caliber within, but you're also getting 100 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown. And I just love the backstory of Ball. They're just a very overlooked brand in my opinion. And I love just the Cleveland, Ohio connection as maybe being a little bit biased here, but really good value for money pieces for around this. And I think this one will work in both casual and dressy scenarios. And when complemented with this next watch, which is really overly diver watch with the Doxa Sub 300T. But I think there's a lot to love with this piece if you do like the world of divers. And if we're talking about a perfect dichotomy here, I think this is definitely this far end into the world of divers as you can really go. We have 42 millimeter case, but like a lot of Seiko turtles or things of that nature, you're getting kind of that more traditional compact case style. The lug to lug is just 44.5 millimeters, getting great water resistance and being under $2,000, you're getting that awesome Awesome, just charm that comes with Doxa subs. I know these won't be for everybody, but I think when contrasting two different opposing watches in one collection, I think this is a good option. But if you wanted something that's a little more traditional that could probably be worn more casually, we can also throw the Oris Aquas in there as another alternative as well. So now for Persona 6, we have the Formal Collector. And to start us out here, I wanna look at a rectangular style watch from Longines with the Dolce Vita. Now the style of overall square rectangular style watches I think has gradually fallen a little bit out of favor, but if we're talking about overall just classic designs, classic feelings in terms of what we wanna present with a dress watch, I think that is just the case shape that I usually recognize with that art deco styling and really kind of those glory years of the mid 20th century and just a fine looking gentleman or lady. So Dolce Vita here, they have mostly women's watches in this range, but there is some available for men as well. So around $1,600 new, you can get the Dolce Vita. This one will have a modified ETA 2681 and you're getting some good case dimensions here that are gonna be smaller, but I think wear appropriately in a wide variety of wrists. So case size of 28 millimeters by 47 millimeters. I think will be a great option for those more formal scenarios and we'll just wear perfectly underneath the dress cuff. And then for the other side, I want something that's gonna be a little bit more avant-garde with its styling or maybe a little bit more modern with what it's going for. And I think there's a couple brands you can think of. I typically like to go German watches as a nice dichotomy from that. And I think you could look at a brand like Nomos. I mean, I'm wearing my Nomos Orion right now, which comes to mind, but new, it's a little bit north of what our budget should be here. So I think what I would probably do is go for Junghans, looking at a couple of different options. You can either go with their Form A series, or I could probably see more just going for the Max Ball. I think it's very traditional. It's a couple of different options. You can go for the black dial with numerals, around $1,000. I think that's a perfect contrast to more of the classic looks of the Dolce Vita. 
And for that max build design, I think it's just so spectacular. There's really nothing else like it on the market. And for around $1,000, I think it's a great dress piece that can also be worn quite casually, worn with a variety of different straps. So I think that would be an awesome way to kind of round out that two-piece collection for somebody that really goes into that more a formal style and wearing. And then to round out our last persona here, we have persona number seven with the perfect trio or the three watch collection. So first starting out here, we wanna look at a dress watch, we wanna look at a diver watch, and then we wanna look at more of a casual watch. So I guess we'll start with the diver watch. And one that we're gonna look at is from Seiko. And this is a JDM model that has absolutely just seemed to blow up in terms of popularity, as I think a few bloggers and people out there have now featured them. And these look awesome, and I kinda wish Seiko would feature more watches of this size in America, but we're looking at the SBDC 101. So these have been kind of selling out pretty quick, but usually they can be found for around $1,100, $1,200 on different sites online. Case size, this is just perfect. 40.5 millimeters, nice thickness, just over 13 millimeters, and a nice lug to lug of 47.6 millimeters. Definitely a different case compared to the Samurais and the Turtles of the World, but you're also getting the automatic Seiko 6R35. So that's the 70 hour power reserve. You're getting basically a similar spec to that of the uh, ETA 2824 2. You're getting plus 25 to minus 15 seconds a day, which is very comparable to a standard ETA 2824 2. So I think really solid performance out of this. And if you know Seiko, typically are greatly outperforming that. And you're getting also a sapphire crystal. So I think this is a great watch, but most importantly out of all of this, these are just amazing to look at. I think these are some of the more attractive Seiko divers that I've seen with case sizes that I think will just be for a mass market point of view, very, very palatable. Now next up, we're gonna be looking at our casual watch for this trio. And that is from Stova with their Partitio. So 37 millimeters, you're getting also the option for both automatic and hand winding. I think hand winding would be a really cool treat here because you're also getting, you can get a display case back, which would be nice to look at for under thousand dollars. I think it's a nice looking movement. We'll also bring down the thickness here under 10 millimeters. You're also getting a wearable lug to lug, capable water resistance, 50 meters, and also getting a sapphire crystal. So Stova overall has a lot of great pieces. I think a lot of people just mostly consider their Fliegers, for example, uh, their Antia series for more that dress side of the, uh, the aisle. But I think this is also a watch that needs to be considered as well as all the other specs. They operate really efficiently in terms of delivering value for money. And now to finally close it out with our dress watch, we have the Tissot Belayed. So just under thousand dollars, you're getting a cost certified movement, 80 hour power reserve, silicon hairspring as well. So I think there's a lot to like here. What they're basically doing to get that 80 hour power reserve is they're reducing the beat frequency up from 28,800 vibrations per hour down to 21,600 vibrations per hour. So a three hertz, which is gonna really maximize the energy stored in that mainspring. But I think these are really attractive. You're getting some up finishing from a TSO point of view on both the dial as well as on that bezel. It has more kind of that knurling style to it, but really unique, nice texture. And I think overall, there's some really good options here from the Blade collection. A couple different dial options as well. I think you'd probably go stainless steel with a silverish dial here to really complement kind of the touches of black that we probably would have with the Seiko, for example. And I think that would really help round out this collection from a dress point of view. And I think you could really get a lot out of this trio. But all right, guys, that concludes this video of building a different watch collection for $3,000. What persona are you most like? And I'd love to see what one did you like the most down below. In addition, in the future, I wanna continue this series. And I think now that we're getting into a higher price bracket, the personas are gonna start changing because I think there's different themes that are probably carried out at these different price tiers. So I'd love to see comments down below about also what you'd like to see added from a persona point of view if we continue this series. Also guys, definitely check out the website, check out those marathon watches that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's a great way to support the content, to allow me to keep doing what I'm doing here. Also be sure to go check out the website guys, have full dedicated reviews on many of the watch pages so you can learn as you shop. Also have a great variety of different straps. I'm really proud of that selection that we have there as well as with the watches that we're gonna be adding more brands soon. It all supports the content and allowing me to continue to do what I'm doing here. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow me on Instagram so you can stay up to date, see some cool pictures of watches. I also did start another review channel. If you wanna stay up to date with those releases, I'll have a link in the description as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.